Well, it's good to look at your happy face today. I hope and pray that you'll have uh, a real spectacular day. Or maybe you'd just like to have a peaceful day. Anyway, I hope that God will order your day in such a way that good things will happen. And a, a couple of good surprises from the Lord. I hope you're ready for them when they come. Ephesians 5, chapter 5, verses 11, actually, um, is the uh, verse, chapter 5, verse 15, is it, it furnishes the walk terminology that we've been working with for these last weeks, and, um, and the verses that follow it through verse 20, we will, are kind of going to unpack this, this last walk phrase. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, is verse 15 of chapter 5 of Ephesians. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. So he combines two ideas and one when he when he said he said look carefully so we could say walk carefully look he says but then he talks about walk look carefully then how you walk not as unwise but as wise so he's got both carefully and wisely and and he, and he says about one, two, three, four, five, six things about how, what it means to walk with wisdom, walk with, as a wise person. Obviously, the, the key word in, in the book of Proverbs in the Old Testament is wisdom. Above all things, you want wisdom. Wisdom is actually spoken of in the Old Testament like, like love is spoken of in the new, where it, where it, it all kind of love sort of embodies everything from humility and tenderness and forgiveness and all kinds of things. They're all part of love. And so Paul says now that um, walking in wisdom will do these things. First of all, it will make good use of your time. He says, use your time wisely. Make the best use of your time, in my version. So we have the gift of time, and he doesn't want us to waste it. He wants us to redeem it, one of the versions says. That is to say, uh, he wants us to, to, to carpe diem our time to uh, take advantage of the opportunities that time presents in order to walk in wisdom. To be wise means that we don't fritter away our time, uh, but we um, try to have both time for rest and time for work, time for family, and time for uh, other things. But proper use of time. The second thing he says is to understand God's will. He said we should not be foolish, but wise. Don't be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Understand what the will of the Lord is. That's what it means to be wise. Understand God's will, and what he's saying is understand how God's will becomes practical, how it it gets its the wheels on the road, the where the wheel, the tire touches the the road. Practical wisdom, and so we might have some things to learn about God's will. But we want to we want to to deal with God's will and Holy Scripture in such a way that uh, we can uh, earth it, as we say. We can. We can manifest it. We can apply it to our realities. God's word has something to say to so many practical situations. The book of Proverbs is very full of practical advice on everything. 
Then he says, be filled with the Holy Spirit, but don't be drunk with wine. And so it's kind of an interesting play there with the word spirit, because of course in English we, we refer to alcoholic beverages, some, a, a certain class of alcoholic beverages anyway are called spirits. And uh, it's, I suppose it's because of the, the, the aroma or whatever of that kind of alcohol. But anyway, Paul says, don't get drunk because that's debauchery. The word debauchery is based on the, on the name of the, of the Roman god of drunkenness and, and drinking, which was Bacchus. So um, Paul says, I, we, don't, we don't want you to be imitating that kind of god. We want you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Inside of you, the, the power, the joy, the freedom of the Holy Spirit, that should, be, that should fill you and overflow from you, from the way, um, from the way you look. Uh, believe it or not, with face masks on in the COVID era, you can still tell whether someone is smiling because their eyes reveal it. Then he says, sing to the Lord. He's talking about worship, but he's talking about Christians getting together and, and sharing scripture with one another. But because they've been singing the Psalms for, for many, many, many generations, he's assuming that they'll be able to sing together the Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So you can't go wrong singing the psalms because um, there are psalms about waking up in the morning. There are psalms about when you're happier, when you're sad. There are psalms about when you have enemies that are attacking you. There are psalms of encouragement. There are psalms about being depressed. There are psalms to go with every emotion of the human experience. Sing to the Lord, he says, with your heart. So then he says, and give thanks always. He, he returns to this Thanksgiving theme, um, which was also part of the walk and love verse from yesterday, which we didn't actually dive into because we're, today we're going to talk a little bit about Thanksgiving. Always, he said, be grateful and expressing your gratefulness always. Sometimes we're like the rivers of the north when it comes to uh, expressing emotion. We're frozen at the mouth. But Thanksgiving is something to be expressed. Thank you. Or to say how much you enjoyed what you just ate or what you just received. Thank you. Thank you should come second nature to us because we, and, and, and I think especially if we are giving thanks to God for all the things that we can ponder, and we could make a list and probably would never end of all the reasons why we can give thanks to our, our, our Lord and our God. Then you get good practice for saying thank you, and you should be saying it in the kitchen and in the living room, and in the yard, and in the garden, wherever you are, and with whom, with whom you may be with, to the pastor after he preaches on Sunday morning, to the musicians that do their very best to praise the Lord with their instruments and with their voices, to people who lead, to people who clean, to people who do menial jobs behind the scenes that nobody ever notices. But if you notice, it's because you're aware that you can be thankful for them and that God wants us to be thankful. The last thing he says is submit to one another, which is usually included in, uh, in the paragraph ahead of the, the scripture about husbands and wives, which follows. But he says, submit to one another. As, as to the Lord. So it takes some humility to admit that somebody else may be right. It takes some humility to, to be in charge of your voice again. 
in such a way that you let somebody else speak, that you let that you become interested in other people in such a way that you ask the kind of questions that get them talking about themselves so you learn what you need to and want to.